Hello there, this is Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, this is just a quick look at a repair of my Sony um, H-Bit MSX machine. This is a uh, early 1980s uh, MSX compatible computer. The um, reason I started working on this was the, uh, the keyboard's never been very good on it and it got to the point where it was basically unusable so... Uh, I've uh, rebuilt the keyboard on it, all the keyboard and all the uh, switches behind the arrow keys. I had to desolder every single one of them and uh, take the switches out, take them apart, clean them up, reinstall them all. Uh, the little tacked switches which it uses uh, behind these uh, were dead. They Them you can't take apart. Them are uh, these here. And, uh, just see these you can't take apart but these are still available so I had to swap all them out and put new ones in and I uh, did all that I was really pleased with myself because I didn't lift a single track on the board uh, taking all them switches out and uh, reinstalling them all really really happy with that and I came and re reassembled the computer powered it up and I'm getting this I'll just show you what it's doing at the moment just uh, Bear, aware, bear in mind that this is an old CRT, so it is going to flicker, but um, at least you can see what the computer is actually doing. Power the uh, computer. Oops. No, I had it on already. Power the computer up. Not liking that. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, there's a computer on. And this is what we're getting. Oh, that's actually a sync with that. That's good. Uh, this is what we're getting unfortunately as you can see uh, It's not displaying properly. It's everything's there. I think the computer actually works. It's just the uh, characters are all broken up like that. It's like It's putting the characters on once and then um, it's trying to redraw them directly underneath it again and the thing I think may be the problem is This here now this let me get something to point with. Let me just switch this off actually because uh, I don't want to show it anything doing any damage. There we go. This here is the uh, video RAM. The uh, MSX uses 16K of video RAM and then um, over here is 48K of um, extended RAM. Now, these RAM chips are exactly the same there we go they are four double one sixes and they're exactly the same um, ICs as used in the lower 16k of the um, ZX Spectrum the um, rubber key um, ZX Spectrum and as we know from ZX Spectrums the uh, they run rather hot these ICs um, is where most memory chips just run on a uh, 5 volt line. These need 5 volts, minus 5 volts, and plus 12 volts. And they run rather hot. And they fail rather uh, rather readily. As well, like the um, Spectrum, the upper RAM, in, well, the actual um, the system RAM in this, are, um, now these are, let me see if I can get that to focus. These are Oki um, 3764s, but they're um, just the equivalent of the um, 4164, which seem which only use 5 volts. They don't have the um, silly 12 volts on them. Um, they run a lot cooler, and they seem to be a lot more reliable. These are what um, the Commodore 64 uses and um, things like that. But... I don't think they're at fault. They might be. I mean, they do fail, but um, I don't think the computer would be getting as far through as it actually is if there was a fault in that RAM. I think the fault is in that RAM there. The only other thing I could find which could be an issue, this computer's obviously been wet some time in its past because there was loads of corrosion in it, is that I found that there. Yeah, it's a 74 series um, logic IC. Um, it's rather uh, corroded. Now I've tried around with it a logic probe and everything's doing something so it's not completely dead but I am going to take that off. I've got a replacement for it. 
I'm going to take that off, put a socket on, clean all the board up round there and see if that makes a difference. I'll just do that anyway so it doesn't get any worse. But my plan is I'm going to remove all eight of them um, 4116 uh, RAM ICs. I'm going to put sockets in the place. And I'm going to take them RAM ICs and I've got something to test them with. What I've got, let's see if I can find it. You know, ah, there it is. We have a uh, 48K ZX Spectrum board. And if you see on the lower RAM here, the end RAM is actually in a socket. So what I can do is I can take that out and I can plug each one of the uh, RAM ICs from the MSX in there. And this, this Spectrum board, uh, it's just a bare board, but it does boot. It um, fires up to the um, Sinclair logo, no problem. Um, and I know if I take that RAM chip out, it won't boot. So what I can do is I can take all eight of the RAM chips off the MSX and one by one put them in there and see whether it boots. And if it doesn't boot with one of them RAM chips in it, they're all the same speed, so this should work quite well. Um, it should tell me which RAM chips are faulty. I can then um, go ahead and see if I can order some replacements. I have been having a look round on the web, and it appears actually that the um, 4164s like that, with a little bit of modification, I think you strap a couple of pins across and you um, leave a couple of pins out for the 12 volt line, can be used to actually replace the 4116s. Now, I had a little go with that the other night, just messing about. I found an old um, 4164 IC, and I strapped it like... I can't actually... Find, ah, there it is. There it is. I'll show you. I strapped it like it showed on the um, web. So you strap them two pins together, and you lift the pin that went up to the um, 12 volts. Now, this is just a scrap one I found in a parts bin. I don't know whether it's any good or not. But... Plug that into that Sinclair and it booted up, but then seconds later it come up with graphical corruption on the screen. So I don't know whether it's the fact that what they're saying on the web isn't true and it's only certain circumstances a um, 4164 can replace a 4116. Uh, um, it doesn't work in every case or whether it's just that RAM chip's bad. I'm not sure. I'm going to see if I can find a way of uh, testing all them um, 64. In fact, I can use this. Because if you look, um, the upper RAM on this has got two socketed ICs, and those are 41, uh, 4164s. I'll probably have to mess with the um, settings, because as you know on the Spectrum it only uses um, half the bank of the RAM. Um, and Spectr Sinclair actually used defective RAM, and just used the half that was working in the defective RAM for the uh, 48k um, upper RAM. But um, I'll have a look at that and see if I can actually use that to, to test all my um, six, uh, 4164s. Um, anyway, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I'll probably do another video after I've um, took all them ICs off. I'm not going to show you doing that because there's plenty of videos showing how to um, remove and replace ICs on the web. But um, yeah, I think I'll do another video after I've taken all them off. I'll taken that off and cleaned it up um, and I'll show you the board once I've repaired it and see if it actually working again so um, okay thanks for now and uh, goodbye